Hi, this is Wei Hao at Direct Impact Solutions. In this video, I will show you how to leverage the power of AI in your FileMaker solutions with Core ML. Before we start this video, the feature introduced in this video is only available on Mac OS and iOS and would require a Mac to develop and test. If you do have a Mac, I'd recommend to install Xcode on it, uh, which can be downloaded from the App Store for free. We will use it later. Before we talk about how to leverage the power of AI in your solutions, let's spend a little bit of time talking about AI in general. Both AI and uh, machine learning have been buzzword for a while. So what is AI? It is actually hard to define because intelligence is hard to define. Uh, however, I do have a reasonable definition that I like, which is that uh, AI is a machine-based system designed to address a specific problem, such as playing Go or chess. This definition emphasizes on the current state of AI, which is that all AIs we have today are considered narrow AI designed to address a specific problem. In contrast, a general AI that can solve many different types of problems independently as human can, don't exist in real life yet. Which is to say that there's nothing to fear about AI at the moment. So what's machine learning then? Machine learning is a branch of AI technologies that leverages a machine's ability to learn from experience to model, predict, and control. It excels at solving problems that are hard to solve as is, um, but easy to find examples. When we use machine learning to solve a problem, we don't specify the solution directly, but automating the process of finding the solution via examples. A well-known application of machine learning is the ability to classify objects in images. Uh, I've included a short video link in the description below to show the basic principles of machine learning and how they're applied in image recognition. Keep in mind that this way of solving problems gives you an answer without explaining why it gives you the answer. It's a little bit like the answer 42 given in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The ability to do interpretable modeling is something scientists and engineers are working towards. Now that we have a high level understanding of AI and the machine learning, let's talk about Core ML. Core ML is a framework that Apple introduced to integrate machine learning models into applications. A model will take user input and give you some output, like a function. Um, the Core ML framework can load a model in Core ML format, so they are easily accessible by applications running on Mac OS and iOS. If I need to make an analogy, think about the Core ML framework like a CD player, while the model is like a CD. A CD player loads a CD to make music inside accessible to its listener, and the Core ML framework loads a Core ML formatted model to make uh, its computational power accessible to applications that need it. And for those of you who are too young to know what a CD player is, please just Google it. You can build and train models in Core ML format using Xcode or convert models to Core ML format using Core ML tools. However, none of these are relevant to us as solution developers. As a FileMaker developer, we usually take an already trained model and use it for our solutions. I want to emphasize again that Core ML is only available on Mac and iOS. This means it can only be used by FileMaker Pro installed on Mac or FileMaker Go on iOS. To use a Core ML model in your solution, the first step is to get a model that fits your need. In my case, I want to do image classification, so I got on the Apple's developer site and found a uh, image classification model named uh, ResNet50. So I click here and I click download. Once the model is downloaded, 
Before using it in FileMaker, I'd recommend opening it in Xcode and put it on the side. We'll use it later. So in this case, I have uh, the model downloaded. I can open it in Xcode. It will give me something like this. Now that we have the model file, we can start building features that use this model. As we mentioned earlier, to use a core ML model, we need to load it and then access it. So let's load the model first. Uh, to load a model, the model needs to be stored in a container field. Uh, we need to call a FileMaker script step named configure machine learning model to load the model from the container field. To help me test different models and make the loading operation data-driven, I created a model table uh, to store model files and their metadata in this uh, demo file. Uh, the script itself is pretty simple. It finds the model by its name, and then it calls the uh, configure machine learning model script step to load the model. When you load the model, you need to tell the script step whether it is a vision uh, or a general model that you're trying to load. So this is specified in the operation parameter of the script step. Uh, for simplicity, let's think about vision model as those models that take an image as input, while general models take numbers and text as input. Aside from vision and general, you can also choose unload as your operation. In which case, instead of loading a model, it will unload a model. After specifying the operation, we need to tell the script step the name of the model. So this name will become the unique identifier for this model within the file during this user session. Later, when we want to access this model, we will use this name. Because this is a unique identifier, if you load a different model and give it the same name, the original model will automatically unload to give the name to the second model. In my case, I store the model name as part of my model table, so I can simply grabbing it from the record. You can see this one is simply named it uh, ResNet50. And in here, I just grabbed it from the table. The last parameter of this script step is to specify the container field where the model file resides. We need to fill this out if we're loading a model. Uh, if you're unloading a model, you don't need to specify uh, a container field. In this case, I'm pulling it from this field named model in here. So as you can see in the script, I'm just getting that from the field. So now the model is load, let's use it. Uh, to use a model, we can use the function called compute model. Uh, the first parameter of the compute model function is the name of the model that you'd like to access. This is the name that we just specified earlier when we load the model. The rest of the parameters come in pairs. Each pair represents an input parameter of the model. So within each pair, the first one represents the name of the input parameter, and the second one represents its value. So as a solution developer, how do we know what the model expects to receive as input? This is where we refer to the uh, model file that we opened with Xcode. If you open a core ML model in Xcode, you'll see something like this. If you go to the predictions tab, you will see something uh, under here that lists the input and output of this model. So from here, you can see for ResNet50, it only expects one input named image, and the type of data it expects is uh, image type data. It is up to Pharmac developers themselves to find out this kind of information before using a model. And usually, the model's developer will provide this information. 
and uh, opening the file in Xcode is actually an easy way to find this info. Let me uh, open up another one named uh, Bird Squad FP16. So this is a general model and uh, you can see this one has two inputs. One of them is uh, named word IDs, the other one named word types and has two outputs. Uh, aside from input info, you can also find other metadata about the model here. For example, if you go to the metadata tab, you will see a lot of information about the model itself, like the um, description, the author, the license. Uh, you can even preview a model from here. So let's see here, I have, uh, I have the image of a monkey when I drag and drop it here. You can see um, it output uh, a classification as well as a confidence percentage. Uh, in addition to the most confident one, it also gives you a list of other um, classifications that the model thinks might be what this image is about. So this allows you to see how this model behaves and what its input and output look like. And if you even want to learn more about this model, uh, you can always find the source code as well as some sample application code on the website. Uh, so let's see if we go back to the, um, the, the Apple developer website, uh, you can find the original source linked in here. And um, sometimes it will also have like project information in here, which will allow you to uh, see some code samples and um, visit their website of the project to see um, application sample code. Okay, now that we have a better understanding of the model itself, let's go back to our uh, application. So we know that the model that we're trying to call is named ResNet50, which is why for the first parameter, I put ResNet50 in here. Then uh, by looking at the model file from Xcode, uh, I learned the model requires one input parameter named image. So the second parameter here uh, should be image. And then the third parameter, in this case, it represents the value of this input parameter that we will be passing to the model. We know it expects an image. So uh, we can grab the image from a container field and uh, pass that to the model. So in this case, if I go to the image uh, layout, this is the place where we store the image of uh, that we want to classify. And um, so this script is just grabbing the, the container data from this container field. Um, and of course, after I try calling the model, I will follow it up with the error trapping step, which uh, in this case, if a model has an error, it will return a question mark. Okay, now let's see this script in action. From the raw result field, we can see that the uh, model returns a JSON object, uh, to be more precise, a JSON array. Uh, with each element in the array being a classification result. And uh, within each element, we have the, the classification itself, like what, the, what does the AI think this object is, and also a uh, confidence number, which can be converted to a percentage. So this match will be saw earlier uh, when we look at this from the Xcode preview function. And uh, I also created a most likely category field. Uh, as you can see, the result in this uh, array are sorted based on the confidence score from high to low. So the very first, um, the very first elements in there should represent the most likely uh, answer to the classification question. Uh, so a quick summary on how to, how to leverage a core ML in your FileMaker solution. Step one, find the model that suits your need and download it. Step two, read its documentation and metadata 
to understand its behavior and input requirement. Step three, insert the model into a container field and use configure machine learning model script set to load it. Step four, use the compute model function to access the model. Pretty simple, right? So before we conclude this video, I'd like to briefly discuss why using CoreML instead of AI web services. I think the most obvious advantage is that this is local and can be used offline, which means you don't need to rely on a network connection for your solution to work. It also means you're not sending your data over the internet. We've all seen data security issues that harm people's privacy all the time. And if um, this is a major consideration for your solutions data, perhaps you should consider this local approach. So let us know how you would like to use the power of AI in your FileMaker solutions in the comments below, or tell us what you're interested in learning. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification. We publish FileMaker videos every week. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.